Mike, turn your games down. Hi, we're another spooky movie episode of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Elberton, and who is forever young with me tonight? I'm Tiffany Elberton, and that's all I got. Hey, everybody, it's Ken of Sanity, and I still believe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Bill. I'm Bill from A Gamer Looks at 40, and one thing about living in Santa Clara, I never could stomach all the damn vampires. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so we are here to talk about The Lost Boys, directed by Joe Schumacher. Came out in 1987 and published by Warner Brothers. So they can actually do something right once in a while. <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> Not lately. They didn't make, how did it do in theaters? I mean, the budget was 8.5 and it made 32. That's so good. it made over three times his budget, at least, That's in quick math. Good. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, more like four times his budget, but hey, quick math. And I was like to kind of say history with this movie. So I thought I had watched this movie before, at least part of it. I have never seen a second of this movie before I found out after we turned it on. <laughs> so I'm not sure what the hell I watched. I, I think it was a second one, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, we have There's it. a second one? There's three. There's, a, There's three. Yeah. I didn't know there was three. Oh. <laughs> the second one is 2008. Oh, what? Yeah, 2008. This came out in 87. Oh. Yeah, it, it was a substantial break between movies. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> I mean, also two comic book series. Oh, does he have a crossbow in the beginning of the second one? Yeah. And, okay, that's what I I think I was watching that. And then someone probably told me, hey, this isn't the first one. And I went, oh, and I turned it off. And then I Corey Feldman was in it. I don't remember anything. Corey Feldman is in it. All I remember was something about a crossbow and vampires. I'm getting his signature someday. I'm telling you what. <laughs> you still got time for that one. I don't. I don't Good luck. Know. Look what happened. Yeah, really. Corey Haim or Haim or whatever. <laughs> oh, poor Corey Haim. <laughs> poor Corey Haim. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. And Tiffany, what is your history with this film? I actually am not sure. <laughs> okay. I was. I don't think it was a movie I saw with my dad. To be honest, I'm not sure my dad was a vampire person. But I was five when it came out, so it's possible he just had none and I was watching it like usual. (laughs) Yeah. And Ken. Oh, gosh. I probably watched this when I was like 10 or something. So like the perfect age for this movie. Yeah, 10 is fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's definitely not Hellraiser. It's not Texas Chainsaw. It's it's just it's a fun vampire movie. And I saw it at an age appropriate time. (laughs) (laughs) And Bill. Uh, I had never seen this movie before. This is my first go around with the with the Lost Boys. Wow, uh, I, I, the most me. <clears throat> yeah, wow. I, no, I didn't see a lot of movies in the eighties. Like the eighties are a bit of a dark spot for me. I was not very media literate in my first ten years of life. And then when I got to actually watching movies, I was watching current stuff. So like a lot of stuff from the eighties. Like I've only seen the Goonies once. I, you know, I've only. Mike you know, so there's a, there's a lot of them I I that are not in my uh, in my wheelhouse. My wife likes to make fun of me and say, "You never saw X Y Z movie." I'm like, "No, it's from the '80s. I I didn't." Wow, and this is one of those very familiar. <laughs> and yeah, and this is one of those I never really saw. I I uh, I I know I knew the meme, the the oiled up saxophone player meme. I've seen that a hundred times on the internet. And then I and when he popped it. up on screen, I'm like, "Ooh, that's what that's from." Okay, cool. Same, I no idea. The exact same thing. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. I had no, I had no idea, but I was like, all right. I say, well, the next one player, very good. Yeah, so this is a, this is a first viewing for me. I've done that a couple times this, the Spooktober so far, <laughs> for you. I love it. I'm a little surprised. I mean, this was also my first time viewing, even though I thought I saw part of it, but did not. You know, I you turn on a movie and you're like, wait, I've never seen this before. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a vampire movie going into it. <laughs> I thought, oh, surprise. I, well, I, you're doing it for Spooktober, and I figured it was something, but I had no, I, I genuinely had no idea. This oh, was, the only thing I knew of it was that oily, oily man playing <laughs> that shiny saxophone and riling a crowd up like no man has ever done. So I don't know. I didn't. I knew that meme too, but I never knew what it was from. And I was like, I, I got so excited, just like you did. I'm like, I finally get it. I finally get the reference. <laughs> <sighs> I knew it was vampires. But that's all I knew. Actually, one reason why this has happened sooner and later is we were actually at a convention and we met two of the actors from this movie, or Tiff did. Yeah. She met, I don't know who their names are. The other frog brother. <laughs> no. Yeah. Ray Feldman, the other one. Oh, and Jameson then, uh, Newlander? Yes. Nice. 
Nice guy. And then um, what's his name? The the little boy vampire. I can't. Remember. Lonnie. Laddie. Laddie. Lonnie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I met him as well. <laughs> nice. They were both super nice. The brother was funny because we were talking, and he was, I, and he was like. I told him, I said, I've never seen the movie before. He's like, hey, you know what? You're lucky. You get to see it for the first time. <laughs> and I was like, all right. Thinking to myself, like, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> but no, he wrote on the poster, uh, kill your brother. You'll feel better. And I'm, and I'm like, huh, okay. Why do you write that? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, he is right. She might feel better if we kill her brother. But why would you and write he that? he asked me, too. He was like, is it okay if I write the kill your brother line? Oh, sure. Go ahead. That sounds great. <laughs> I just didn't want to offend you. Oh, man, come on now. <laughs> oh, I think I made a cop. Like, it's okay. She's not offended. My brother's an asshole. Uh, but it was pretty funny. I had no idea. I'm like, what the hell? Then I watched the movie and he made the line. I'm like, oh, there's the line. <laughs> it's on my poster. And you also got to meet another person from this movie, too. Oh, yeah, the makeup artist. Val something. No, I can't remember her name. Anyways, I mean, she did, like, Beetlejuice and some Star Trek. She got a bunch of awards. Batman Returns also. Oh, of sweet. Said that. Well, that's because they both they, they would recognize that. Right away. Speaking of Batman, we should probably talk a bit about we we, we actually talked a lot about Joel Schumacher in the last <laughs> movie we did with him. So yes. you don't probably we probably don't need to rehash it. But for those who haven't who haven't watched this or haven't listened to uh, a games my mom found and don't listen to every single episode, how dare you? I mean, how you should. You? That's my question. <laughs> I don't mean that's the question is really how can you? Uh, what was the it was I guess Batman and Robin was the last Schumacher joint we did, yes. right? Yeah. You only did three of his movies, forever, Batman and Robin, and then this now. Yeah, again, and this is a good reason why you should not discount Joel Schumacher as a director. Um, this is this is a very fun movie. I, I started off not liking it too much. I was like, what? And then I settled into its rhythms, and by the end, I was thoroughly enjoying myself. So that's kind of my, my path with it. And much like the best of Schumacher's movies, it's a little bit horny. Oh, boy, <laughs> oh, boy, is it. Boy, oh, boy. <laughs> A little bit. My, my wife asked you. I, I was like, I, I, I think like half an hour, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is uh, this is totally a Schumacher joint. And she goes, what else did he make? I'm like Batman and Robin. And before I could say anything else, she goes, ah, makes sense. Okay, that tracks. <laughs> Very good. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. No, it. You can definitely feel it. You can also feel that, like, the well, same with Batman and Robin. Like, you can feel the horny gayness that that movie had too. And it works in here, but it's also because it's the 80s. It feels a little disguised where some people wouldn't catch it, where I wouldn't have caught it had I not know about Schumacher. And I like it. Oh, yeah. He shoots all of the boys very nicely in this movie. (laughs) Like, they are all beautiful. And I (laughs) just Mm -hmm. impressive. Indeed. I've come to appreciate. I haven't seen a lot of his movies. I think I've only seen now three, but I appreciate them so far. Like, I appreciate this. Like, it. This movie just, I was watching a review about it, too, that kind of explained something that I didn't really think about, but put a lot more onto it, how the whole movie is about being young. That's oh, yeah. all it's about, is eternal, you know, having youth and not what, caring. A lot of the vampire movies are about. I mean, maybe. Uh, maybe. And Ken, since for some reason I just remembered, what is the plot of this movie? <laughs> oh, I will absolutely tell you. Lucy brings her sons, Michael and Sam, to Santa Carla for a new start. Unfortunately for all of them, that new start begins and ends with goddamn shit-sucking vampires. <laughs> Sam enlists the help of local comic book enthusiasts, the Frog Brothers, but will that be enough to end the curse of the murder capital of the world? Well, I still believe. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Very Yay. good. <laughs> this is the point in the show where we compliment Ken on his, on his readings. This is great. No, Thank that's you. very well done, sir. Very well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like how it's based on a real city, too. I mean, that I think also had a murder problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. Santa Cruz had a big murder problem. Santa Clara. Oh, Santa Clara is based on Santa Cruz, California. Oh, is Santa Clara not a, not a real place? No, they weren't allowed oh, to dang it. use the real name. So well, San, it's based Santa off of Santa Clara Cruz. Diet, okay. So I really thought it was a yeah. real place. I did, too. Uh, so serial I, killers John Lindley Frazier, Herbert Mullen, and Ed Kemper all killed in Santa Cruz. 28 goodness. murders over a 30 month period between 1970 and 73. Good lord. Oh, that's, that's a lot. You got a beach, you got everything there, you got a boardwalk, and that's what you do with your time? All right, fine, I guess. <laughs> hey, you know, some people go to boardwalks and watch greased up saxophone men, some people murder. <laughs> 
Some people are. <laughs> That's right. I, 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 it's funny about in the opening of this movie, I had very strong flashbacks to my, my childhood or my youth going down to the Jersey Shore because the Jersey Shore is all about its boardwalk and its, its attractions and the games and the rides and all that. And I'm like, is this like, are we down the shore here? But no, no, no. We were in California. Um, definitely a different vibe. But I had a, lots of flashbacks to my days walking up and down the boardwalk in uh, Wildwood or in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. <laughs> Seaside Heights. All those fine places I used to spend time in. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, too. But I, I like, it was cool. I mean, I like the setting. I, I like how when they get to the town... It says murder capital spray painted on the back of the sign. Like, I love that. Very good. And there's such a subtle thing that I saw. I mean, I paid attention to it when this movie first started. But like as this playing the, the music and they arrive in town, all this stuff happening. You kept seeing and you see it throughout the whole film. Posters of missing people everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Wasn't there even Oof. one on back of the milk garden? Uh-huh. It's the kid. Oh, That's yeah, later. That's later. I thought we were jumping around. We are, but. <laughs> okay. like, but you, like. The point is, a lot of people go missing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I the, even this opening of this movie. I know we're not going in order, but it's just. I mean, I, I'm just going to talk about it since we're talking about it. The opening of this just drops you square into a carnival. Now, I love the shoot. I love the shots in this. I think this is very. There's a lot of really beautiful stuff going on here from a filmmaking perspective. I, I, Schumacher, Schumacher is very good at what he does, and there's a lot of really great shots and scenes in this. This opening though, where you're kind of like swooping in. Across the river, and you see they give you the the boardwalk and the roller coasters, and it zooms in on this on this merry-go-round. Oh, Not merry-go-round. Yeah, I was I was gonna say Ferris wheel, but no, no, no. <laughs> My no, Jersey no. card would be taken away if I called it merry-go-round <laughs> a Ferris wheel. Just like I would say that's a funnel cake. That's a whatever it is. Anyway, the yeah. So we zoom in on this on this carousel, and all you have is all you're given are people on a carousel and a bunch of just Punk rock, no good nicks. Just obviously <laughs> cruising around it, looking for trouble. Punk and, and I, rock, no good nicks. That's right. That's right. I, like it. Oh, so I love that. that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As opposed to the punk rock good nicks that, 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 that frequent most places. Uh, I was like, that sounds like a band name. <laughs> that could be. Could be punk rock, no good nicks. Could be like a, <laughs> like a salsa band. Just go completely off the reservation. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, I, I just like how he drops you in, and it's obvious that these uh, young toughs are no good. They're ne'er do wells, and uh, I don't know. It just it just very off putting and unsettling. It's got this very yeah. I felt very off put and unsettled, which of course is the point. But yeah, I do like this beginning quite a bit. A, I think it's a very good opening, and like I mean, I knew who they that I knew they weren't human because I knew bits and pieces of this movie from Osmosis. I didn't. I had no idea. I'm just like, these Bill, kids are up to no good. Bill went in blind, and I think that's amazing. I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah, I honestly am, too. I know. I had no idea this was a vampire movie. <laughs> I did. <laughs> genuinely had no idea. I, so my take on it was, all right, this is kind of like a, an SLC punk situation. You know, it's like these young toughs on the streets, lost boys. Okay, maybe... I'm still thinking like Peter Pan, but no, not those lost boys. <laughs> You're not wrong. I mean, yeah, not a thousand percent wrong, right? But um, yes. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, it does have actually a lot of Peter Pan's D's to it. But I don't know. I just walked into it, and it just drops me in. And me not knowing anything about this movie, I was very taken aback. I'm like, okay, I guess this is gonna be like the young toughs and the and, and I had this weird flashback of young toughs down to shore. Like I, I remember this, not like punk rockers, just like kids down the shore in gangs of groups just always making me nervous as a as a young man like just not being comfortable in my own skin just like oh i don't want them to mess with me so i had lots of like my hackles were up immediately i was like oh i don't like this uh, please please security guard get them off the boardwalk <laughs> off the boardwalk <laughs> off the boardwalk you too <laughs> hey, you guys. Uh, it definitely creates some too. didn't work out too well definitely creates some dread though definitely creates some tension uh where you know things aren't quite right here but it's very 80s, too. Like just oh, totally. Every, the feel of it, like all these people, the way they're dressed, like it's such an 80s movie. And, you know, it's like it's kind of nice when, you know, we're looking at it, what, almost 40 years later. And like it just has that effect. It's just like it's kind of nice like to take that time warp back. So let's go back to Peter Pan, shall we? <laughs> please. Let's. I know what you're getting to. So please. Okay. Yes. Uh, this was originally more based on Peter Pan. Really? Yes, cool. the original script was 
drastically different. The head vampire's name was not David. It was Peter. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, geez. It, it was supposed to be like, from the words of the screenwriter, it was, uh, we had designed the film to be a boy's adventure set in a time before sex rears its head, but it's not what the studio wanted. Donner wanted the boys old enough to drive, which he meant was old enough to fuck. <laughs> and Star was originally a boy changed into the female love interest. But once it was sold, you know, they just rewrote it to hell and death. Mm. I mean, I think the 80s would have had a hard time with that. <sighs> Probably. With two men. <laughs> so. Well, like, you know, not to fuck each other, but like just to fuck right. in general. I thought, okay, I thought you were going to say fuck each other. I'm like, yeah, 80s no. wouldn't like that. No, no, no. 80s wasn't. His interview with a vampire. <laughs> it was it was pretty free, but it wasn't that free. No. <laughs> it took us a long time to get there. We're still not completely there, but we're better than we were. So, yeah, Lost Boys, absolutely inspired by Peter Pan. That's why they kept the title. And the title works even for vampires. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, and the idea can still stick with Peter Pan, where you have these characters who are just, who are acting like Lost Boys from Peter Pan. They hide out in a freaking old, rundown hotel that's underground. Like, they fit to be like that. They're just hanging out at the carnival and riding motorcycles and killing people on the beach. Yeah, you know? hanging off the railroad tracks. <laughs> That part, okay. So when the other, when one of the one of the brothers who gets turned into a vampire, well, he drank the blood. And he's in the process of turning into a vampire. When he hangs down before he knows, like he doesn't know he's immortal yet. Like what the? He f- wasn't immortal yet. I don't think was he. He was immortal enough. He didn't die when he fell. He had already drank the yeah. blood. Yeah, so but like what that. part? I mean, I was a dumb teenager too. But my dumb ass would go, "Hey, let's go hang from a bridge." Oh, <laughs> like yeah, I, could. <laughs> I did dumb shit. I walked across a big steel beam where if I would have fell, I would not have been okay. But I did well, not. And is that what you're afraid of heights? You know, I'm like, their thoughts are going to play in, but I, I played in that fear of heights. It wasn't there when I was younger. There now. Look, we, we, we got a bridge in Kenosha that goes over a harbor, and it used to be a rite of passage to jump off that bridge. Oh, God. I don't want to say. Uh, <laughs> but it wasn't that high, and the water underneath was pretty deep because, you know, boats were going through it. Okay, so yeah. That's so, like was more of the overcome your fear of heights, jump off the bridge. I didn't have a fear of heights then. I do bridge. now. <laughs> I do now too. Not because of that bridge. I don't. I don't I don't I I never liked heights too much, but for me, nowadays I'm I really don't have a problem with it anymore. I don't know. I blame Great America. Sure. Sure. They um, do it. They used to have a ride called the Giant Drop. Oh. Yep. They just pick you up and then drop you. Yeah. Oh, I know. And I don't uh, know, when I ro- rode it in the first year, I was, you know, bigger than the ride probably should have accepted. And the shoulder harness popped a notch. Oh. Just one notch on the way down. Oh, I have never been more terrified in my life than I was at that point. I used to ride roller coasters before that. I couldn't do anything afterwards. No, oh, I, I don't. I'm... No, that's fair. I, yeah, because that thing comes off and you're flying. I used to go to Six Flags Great Adventure at least seven, eight times a summer because my mom would always get us season passes for it. So that's what I did on the weekends. I would just go to Great Adventure and ride the roller coasters. I love roller coasters to this day. I love roller coasters so much. My son and I, we watch roller coaster movie uh, videos, like, you know, in 4K on the, te- on the big TV. You know, like, <laughs> we watch roller coaster videos. And we- I am the guy who will pretend to fall asleep on a roller coaster just to annoy the person next to me. I was like, <laughs> I am that kind of, I was, I was, I don't think I would do it now, but I, I was that kind of jerkwad when I was a, a young lad. <laughs> I remember one time I was, I was riding, I was on Batman. It was one of those feet hanging roller coasters where the yeah. cars on the outside of the track. And I had the same thing happen to me, Ken, that the, 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 the belt or the shoulder harness chunked up. Like it was loose as we're going up. I just heard it pop. So I spent the whole ride just holding it down, holding myself into the ride. Undeterred, I went again. I was like, that was so cool. Oh, I'm so oh. Good to get. Yeah, it didn't bother me. I was just oh. like, oh, that was genuinely terrifying. Other than the 85,000th time I've ridden this ride and can do it in my sleep. Yeah, I'm one of those guys that I can, I'll make faces into the camera when it takes your picture like that or do something stupid or flip it off when I was younger. Of course. It was just that. <laughs> totally. I just very laissez-faire on the roller coaster. So. Yeah, I, I, when I met Tiff, I promised her we'd go on some roller coasters together because I worked at the Mall of America, so I got, like, discounts and free days. Yeah, we went on one. I went on a log ride, and I said, nope, <laughs> never again. I will go on 
anything. Like anything. You you, you name it, I'll go on it. I, I if, if it's something super terrifying, I could be talked into it very pretty easily. So. So let me, for those of you that don't know what log ride is, you just kind of go in like the little tunnel, and at the end, there's a a big drop in the water. And as we started to do that, I heard, "Oh my fucking god!" <laughs> <laughs> and never went on that ride again in my life. I love that ride. That's one of my favorite rides. It's great. I log flumes are fun. You get wet. May I say that was one of the most Midwestern senses I've ever heard in my life. It dropped into the water. That was that was amazing, <laughs> Tiff. That was amazing. Amazing. I I, I genuinely <laughs> No, I genuinely love that. That was great. I love I love local inflections. I think it's so fun. It's, it's fantastic. Worse. It is. It's wonderful, especially we travel, and then you start talking, like, all of a sudden, it really comes out, like, from Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, that was super Minnesota. It's great. I just, just applauding you for, for embracing your regionality. But anytime in movies when I see, like, amusement parks, I'm like, I'm, I always have to stop myself, like, why do people want to go there? Like, that looks terrifying. Oh, it's so fun. I want to go but, tomorrow. <laughs> it just that's what went through my head in this movie, too. Like, I'm like, why would you want to be on those rides? Oh. But I can't help it. I just don't like it. But I, I really didn't even think about that this movie is supposed to be very much about being carefree, being young, not having a care in the world, not worrying about all the missing, you know, missing people posters you see everywhere. Like, it's supposed to be all be- all of beneath them because you're a child, so you feel invincible. Like, that's, I guess, one of the themes that this movie is going for that kind of went on my head a little bit the first time I watched this. I watched this twice in preparation for this episode. He was so excited. <laughs> I liked it more the first time. Did you? I I wasn't in the right mood the second time. Yeah, well, it was your idea. So. I know, but no, I mean it's still had fun. Like this, this has been one of those movies on a list that I've been meaning to see for a long time. <laughs> so, no, I mean it, it had some really cool themes. I think the the makeup is super well done too for all the vampires, and it did remind me a little bit of Buffy when they go from human to vampire. It had that same Buffy feel to it. Is that where Buffy got it from? Probably. Okay. I mean that's that's fair. They do take on kind of like a quote-unquote demonic appearance they're not the smooth sexy boys that would later <laughs> go on to grace That's the funny. silver screen <laughs> i like that though i like it that they're ugly demonic looking vampires idea like i think that's a good take for what this is because this is really showing them that they're carefree but they're also vicious murderers that as you see like with the miss posters that they have been murdering a lot of people yeah and well, they're hungry <laughs> not that many of them I think the look is emblematic of what they have to do to live forever. It's such a horrible act. Killing somebody, drinking their blood, you're essentially taking their life to sustain your own. And that's the kind of thing that can turn you ugly inside, definitely. Oh, but yeah. then it's reflected outside in the horrible look and absolute ferocity of the vampires. And... I I think it's great. I think the vampire should get ugly when it's time to vamp out because <laughs> it is such a horrid act. It's not sexy monster fuckers. Stop it. <laughs> and you have to kill so much. Because, I mean, the, the idea, depending on your fiction, is they need to kill, like, what, every night almost? Or something like that? You need to feed yeah. quite often. I don't think any yeah. of them are like that, were they? I feel like in Anne Rice's world, they feed quite often. In Anne Rice's world, though, they feed because they can. Yeah, uh-huh. it's more of a pleasure thing. Okay. Yeah, like, like Lestat does it to show like dominance. Yeah. I don't care what any vampire property says. All that matters is Blade, okay? We <laughs> do it because we're angsty or angsty assholes who live, <laughs> who live in high rises, and we're going to just go, me. But Blade, they die so easy. <laughs> True, they just they, they really let us crumble to pieces. I have to say I was very happy to see Diane Wiest in this movie. Yeah. I was Hell very yeah. pleased. She's awesome. We've we've celebrated her on this podcast many times, and she mm-hmm. is great as always. She's good yeah, in everything she does. We fucking love Diane Weist. Mm-hmm. We do. We do. We should start a fan club. <laughs> she's awesome. She's so good. Is she is she still around, Diane Weist? Oh, I'm. Yeah, she's got to be still doing. Oh yeah, stuff. she's still she's still she's still alive. Fantastic. No, seventy six. Perfect. She's great. She's great. I love her in this role. I love her in any role. Like she's a good actress. And I think I mentioned I wasn't really sold on the movie. I think Corey Haim really, he's my probably my favorite part of this as young yeah. Sam. I really love his quips and I really like the the line this movie dances. You said it really well, Ken, that this is the kind of movie that's perfect for a 10 year old because this is spooky and it's goopy. And it's a little bit gory. And it's a little bit gross. 
it's just the right amount of spoopy for for a kid, and I and I think he he really lends a lot to that. Where he's constantly wisecracking. I thought him very fun and good in this. He's probably my favorite character. And the relationship between Sam and Michael, like that's that's brothers, man. Yeah, that's true. Like they yep. have good chemistry together. When they're walking around the uh, the the hippies' house, you know, trying to get getting the tour, and getting the rules of the day. And they're just like messing with each other, like just 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 needling each other constantly, constantly needling each other. That is such a brother thing. And but when it when it when it comes down to it, they're there for each other. You know, even mm-hmm. you know, when he's even when he's flying out of the window. What are you, the flying nun? Oh, that's a reference that <laughs> yeah. no one's gonna get. That's okay. awesome. Okay, yeah, let's. I did not. Great reference. In 1987, I'm not sure that anybody would have gotten. Yeah. That. Like, <laughs> no. Nobody remembers that television show. I mean, I've never seen it, but I know what it is. Oh, the television show? Yeah. yeah. It's, um, who was the main actress? I can't remember what her name is. Nobody. Oh God, it was somebody kind of important. Wasn't it? Wasn't she in Forrest Gump? That one? No, not her. I can't remember her name. Um, Sally Field, yeah. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Forrest Mom, yeah. Now he's got a good look. 1967 sitcom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... (laughs) Very young. 20 years later, throwing a reference into a vampire movie. Impressive. (laughs) That's pretty good. That's how you know the people that made this were fucking nerds just like us. (laughs) Oh, you, there's a part that made me upset, but also made me laugh at the same time. So the comic book store. Oh my so you God. have the two brothers who are the vampire hunters. <laughs> a couple things I had to mention. Like, one, I was like, why the hell are these kids running a comic book store? Was I didn't The first time I watched the movie, I did not see their two parents just sleeping next to the TV in the corner all the time. Sure they're sleeping? I think yeah. they were dead. <laughs> I mean, they Don't never move. moved. No. no, they did not. But the part when the dead. the guy gets upset that they're ste- that the people are stealing comics, I was thinking to myself, like the only comic you would have next to the door, especially a door that's not even a door that's right by the gateway of people coming and going, are going to be like your at the I'm guessing what twenty five cent books in, at this time, ten cent books. Like those are your garbage, garbage comics that you just have hundreds of. Doesn't yeah. matter, man. Inventory is inventory. <laughs> inventory is right. I got ten cents is ten cents. Oh, uh, but all I could. I have, to account for the, I have to account for the shrink that's happening. I, I, I can't. I don't I think the owners would have been too concerned from the look of them if they were alive. The Frog Brothers were the owners. They were the ones taking care of the shops. They're the ones yeah. that are going to have to account for that loss at They're, tax time. I know. It, it's really, I mean, come on now. Loss <laughs> prevention, please. Which is always funny things, to me yeah. when Good. they steal these books and run off. And I'm just like, man, this is. But at the same time, anytime I see a comic book store in an old movie. I try to like pause it wherever I can to see what issues are on the wall. Did you? Oh, yeah. I don't think you could. No, I mean, they showed a couple, but there are some really rare books that might not be as rare in the 80s that will get me excited. Like, I was, I, I made this joke to Tiff. I'm like, if I had a time machine, I'd want to go back to like a comic book store in like the 80s. Of course you would. <laughs> That'd be one of the things I'd want to do. Just in the 80s, not soon. 70s, 80s. I mean, 80s, there's still been a lot of comics I can get that would be dirt cheap compared to what they are later. Oh, sure. So I'd be happy. So here's my question. Were you a big enough nerd to actually do the research into Batman number 14? Uh, yes, I looked it up, but I, I looked it up the first time I watched it. It's Riddler, isn't it? Penguin. It's a, Penguin? I, okay. I knew it was one of them. You looked it up because of me. Don't even lie. You're talking about the Batman whatever he's Yeah, about. when he makes a comment yeah, about... Yeah, because I said, I wonder how much that would be worth today. Because he was acting like it was so rare. And then it's, I looked it up. You're welcome. It's, it's, not, it's not rare at all. <laughs> <laughs> I found like seven graded copies while I was looking in the five minutes I was looking. Like, <laughs> it's not that rare. I mean, not when there's like there's only four in existence. I'm like, if you're going to say a book like that, it's got to be like Action Comics number one. Even now, there's more than four in existence. So, this is a made up world, Mike. Let it go. No, <laughs> it's, it's Santa America. Carla. It doesn't exist. Fair enough. <laughs> I just want to say real quick that Grandpa for me is like old people goals. Mike's oh. gonna be dead. I'm gonna be driving around, hitting on the widowers and checking up, <laughs> like, smoking something. <laughs> The grandpa is probably the best character in this movie. Yes. <laughs> I, I do like the grandpa. I like how when he's like, I'm going to go see the Widow Johnson. Like, he has to make sure he puts in the Widow. The Widow. <laughs> <sighs> well, like, in a smaller town, that's how you know people. Like, oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's Mrs. Johnson. Her husband died. We'll just call her the Widow Johnson. 
What was the nickname of that? Oh gosh, darn it! What was what was we were watching some movie and there was a, some nickname for a neighborhood neighborhood <laughs> lady of the night. Oh. Damn it! What was it? Oh, never mind. I can't I remember what film. I'm sorry. Never mind. Forget it. I'll I'll next time I'll actually form the thought before I start speaking. And no, and it's fine. You got me curious. Neighborhood lady of the night. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, oh God, was it Dirty Harry? Yes, it was Dirty Harry. What was the name of the Hot Tina? <laughs> Hot, hot Tina. Tina. Every neighborhood's got Hot Tina. <laughs> Thank you for saving the bit. Oh. Oh. I'm surprised that came back to me. I was so thinking about it. I'm like, wait, we we talked about this. What movie was it? And then I was, yeah, Hot Hot Tina, her boyfriend. That, yeah, That was really her name, Hot Tina. Yes. <laughs> All right. So here's my head cannon. Hot Tina grows <laughs> old and her husband dies. She still has his last name, Johnson. Oh, no. Tina Johnson <laughs> is the widow Johnson. Wow. There we go. Excellent. It did in California, Dirty Harry. So it sure. did. Inviting. Nobody's alive to tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Actually, there are several people alive that could tell me I'm wrong, but they won't. <laughs> because I think they like it. I also got to say, I appreciate Kiefer Sutherland not stuttering in this movie. So that was nice. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I made one choice, okay, and I still maintain it's a good choice. <laughs> I I don't mind Kiefer Sutherland in general. Like he was, I thought he was good in this. This was the second time in a few years that he played an absolute shithead. Because <laughs> uh, just before this, he was in uh, God. What is that? Stand by me. I should really oh, watch that someday. He was he was one of the bullies or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, we yes. should watch. He's never seen Stand My Beat, guys. <laughs> no, or the Goonies to mention something that was brought up earlier, too. <laughs> you should see the Goonies. Stand you by me. see the Goonies. We might Sean. Adam, I have a know. poster. Yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, I have a poster of 80s movies that I, that I should watch, and I've been slowly checking them off as we cover them on the show. There's still a whole bunch left, but we've done a couple. So we've done five, mm-hmm. including this one. This is number five of like 20 movies. Hey, so. All right. Yeah. I'm working on it. All right. It's the Shining down here too, Ken. Have you seen it? I've seen it, but I haven't covered it. We just oh. talked about it, and he complained because bo- he said the book is better, which the I book believe. is better. The hundred percent, the book will always be better. But I'll never read the book. So. Okay, here, let me put it this way: the book is not only better, the book is completely fucking different because Stanley Kubrick made his own movie and called The Shining. It's not. <laughs> It's literally, it has almost nothing to do with the actual book itself. It's completely different. Oh, um, well, then I don't need to read the book. I'm not surprised. <laughs> but I, I, book I is real good. Book's awesome. That movie someday, again. But that's what else I want to say. Oh, no, so Keith Sutherland's good. The other vampires, I only recognize one other one. Alex Winters, I think is his name. <laughs> Alexander Bill Winter? Ted. Yeah. Because I told you, look, that's the I recognize Bill Ted, you did not. I did. He has a, he has a very <laughs> standout <laughs> face. Yeah. You think Especially when he was so young. I know. He's cute. And this but is... Having... The young having all the young actors fits the vampires, and it, it, I think it fits really well. I was also thinking with it because one's a little kid, like, you shouldn't be turning a kid into a vampire. Like, I know we just had this conversation <laughs> recently, but yeah, I was thinking, like, I just I don't know, it always like the mindset to turn a child to forever be a child is makes you a horrible, horrible creature. Like, well, I that's why he's not a child, he's a teenager. Is he not the little one? Oh, like, Laddie, yeah. Laddie. Yeah. That's yeah, a that was a mess up, but I you say know. he's a preteen. <laughs> I was like ten years old. Pre-teen. He's a preteen. Yeah, I would say like twelve. That's too young to become a vampire. But you're <laughs> like forever twelve. David and Marco and Dwayne and the other guy, his name I don't remember. You guys Paul. <laughs> Paul, the uh the blonde guy. Like oh they're at least like sixteen, seventeen when they were turned. So yeah. like I think that's a fine enough age. Not the age that I would want to be a vampire. No. 22. 22. Enough to drink. Well, no, just because if you're in your early 20s, you, I guess, keep your, you'd be old enough that you can pass through his stuff. But eh. what were you going to say, Ken? as a teenager, like in Twilight. <laughs> no, I was just going to say 22, probably a good idea. Oh, well, I was also thinking of, of two different songs. Nobody likes you when you're 22 and... Yeah, the Taylor Swift one. Yes, I couldn't think of how it went, but yes, it's been a while since I heard that song. So I was, but that's what my brain went to. Also, I didn't think any of those. <laughs> it's fine. It's in the recording now. Okay. Hello. <laughs> uh, you know, I was also trying to think. What is? How old is? Fuck. What is the guy's name in Sandman? Hobbs. Oh, Hob Gatling. Yeah, he's like what in his thirties. 
Yeah, probably. And he just never ages again because he said he doesn't want to. Yeah, God, I love that. I love that book. That's <sighs> either here nor there. So we've talked about Corey Haim a little bit. We should talk about Jason Patrick, Michael. Man, he's got the smolder. <laughs> yeah, he does. Mm-hmm. Like, he's got that 80s attractive man look. He, he does. He does. And The thin writer smolder. You know what? Yeah, that's like, exactly what it is. Someone has to get that. Tangled. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> there was like credits for 30 seconds. <laughs> but like Jason Patrick has done some some great stuff over the years. He's... He was in Speed 2. <laughs> oh, God. The classic. The classic. Yep, the classic Speed 2. I was in a little movie called Sleepers, which was, oh. you know, for like five years, that movie was huge. Yep. Uh, he's also in a little movie that comes out in a couple days called Terrifier 3. <laughs> oh, uh, we were just talking about that in the virtual green room. Yes. Yeah. The so <laughs> see how things come around. It's uh, yeah. cyclical. I got to try that movie again and hopefully not false. <laughs> Sleepers is wild. I don't think I've seen Sleepers. I might know of it, but I've never seen it. Check the check this this dossier out on the cover. Kevin Bacon, Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, Jason Patrick, Brad Pitt. Like he <laughs> that name, that fourth name does not belong with those other four people. Damn. They weren't they weren't superstars <laughs> then. Well, see, yeah, like- 96. Yeah, I mean Robert De Niro certainly was. Dustin well, Hoffman, Robert De Niro Bacon, was. Brad okay, Pitt. Then. Yeah, I mean, they're all stars. They're huge stars in 96. Anyway, sorry. I just saw that as we were going through and seeing that that, uh, that poster. Oh. Well, it just that goes to show that Jason Patrick probably should have gotten bigger. Maybe. Like, Maybe. Was he, was he good in, in Sleepers? He was great. He's great in everything. He was great in Solar Babies, which was the movie he did before this. Uh, yep. Starred. I think that's where Jamie Gertz and he actually met. Yep. 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 I was reading up on that. That's where him and Jamie Gertz actually met. And he was actually, he had a, he had to be really convinced to do this movie, which is surprising considering his only movie up to that point was a thing called solar babies, which I've never seen. Cause again, solar babies is, it, it's <laughs> think of the most eighties movie possible. Now double that. And that's solar nice. Babies. Like, I'm in, I'm in. Is, that's fantastic. It is a wild movie, but like he, he's done a lot. And I always thought that he had it. And then I saw Speed 2, and I was like, oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, buddy. Well, they offered him a paycheck. Right, I was going to say he did it for the money, hopefully. But, like, he's he's good when he when he shows up, he's good. Corey Haim, man, like, Corey Haim was unstoppable for a while. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Totally. Corey's. Oh, yeah, between him and Corey Feldman becoming the pop culture force known as the Corey's. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you, you couldn't get away from him for a while. Nope. And uh, uh, he died he was young. In, he was did. Say, he's pretty young. Thirty-eight. Yeah. Yep. He was yeah. selling his teeth. Does anybody remember that? <laughs> oh God. No, Why really. Selling his teeth. Yeah. 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 Well, he. 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 Oh, I see. <laughs> he had he a lot of the, problems. Yeah, a lot of drug addiction. And to be yeah. fair, they probably oh, just boy. fell out. He probably didn't have to pull them at all. Oh, poor Corey Haim. Yeah, he had lots of issues. He, he was one of life. he he was way too young with way too much money and absolutely no guidance. Yes. <laughs> it was the he he was in the perfect storm of there was no chance he wasn't going to have an issue with something like there is. It's a very sad story of of Corey Haim. But I have a somewhat very tenuous connection to Corey Haim. Oh, so in 1997, oh. Corey Haim had a few movies come out. One of which uh, was this little movie that we covered on the podcast called Batman and Robin. Mm-hmm. He was one of the biker gang members. Oh, is he really? Yep. Yeah, he I'm was credited. uncredited. Oh, uh, but then there was another movie that came out called Fever Lake. Now, Fever Lake was shot in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And somebody I went to high school with, or junior high school with, somebody I actually talked to, uh, was also in this movie with Corey Haim and Mario Lopez. And, y'all, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad movie. <laughs> like he was good, but the movie was bad. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't Lake Geneva. It was Twin Lakes. My mistake. But it was like shot ten minutes away from me. Yeah, filming mm-hmm. occurred in Kenosha County, Wisconsin. Yep. So, like, that is my extremely tenuous. I probably breathed the same air as Corey Haim at one point. <laughs> 
And uh, man, it's just I feel I feel bad for him. He had he had such a rough life. Yeah, really yeah, hard. a little bit. He had abuse and things, and and he had so much talent. Yeah, he, like he, he was did. he was charming. Oh, I, I was just gonna say he was effortless. Eff, bleh, he was effortlessly charming and had a magnetic screen presence. All the cliches that I can think of. Mm-hmm. But he was great. He was one of those actors that could have had a really long career, and if his demons didn't um, just finally catch up with him, it was it's really sad. And yet, somehow, we still have Richard Grieco. And somehow, some way, we. St- <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> Star Twenty One Jump Street, also yeah. of the uh, Warner Brothers spy thriller, if looks could kill. Which I want to cover on the podcast someday because it's dumb. I love it. That's, that's <laughs> it's good, dumb. Okay. Oh yeah. A stupid fun movie. I like those though. Um, yeah, it can be. Yeah. It can be fun. We haven't talked about Edward Herman yet, Max. Oh, like that. What? Were you, what did you say, Ken? I like him. <laughs> he yeah, he was good. He that had vampire. Right? Well, yeah, which I didn't. Ca- Tiffany had made a comment, so she had some memory of this movie. You, <laughs> you were like, "That's a head vampire." I'm like, "What?" But then they, all their tests failed, and I was like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> well, I mean, one, garlic. I like the idea that garlic's a myth that doesn't work, and depending on your fiction of vampires. Holy water does. So I have an issue with that part. <laughs> the only holy water is holy water is that it had to have been blessed. Why the fuck did somebody bless the water at the church? What if, what if they didn't bless it? What if you thought they did, and he never did bless Can't it? Can't you bless your own? Does it say you have to be? You have to be a priest. Where does it say that? <laughs> well, it's not holy water. Look, here's the thing. Holy water works because you believe it works. Right. The right. same reason as crosses. Garlic, unfortunately, it's just a fucking, it's garlic. It doesn't fucking work. But, like, a holy water, I think it's, it's one of those things. This reality is weird. I think we can all agree on that. Reality is strange. I would agree with that. Yeah, I just, what, I mean, it is funny when they go to the church and they just start filling up their canteens and the people, people are just like, staring. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, I mean, that's funny, but I was thinking to myself, like... But that water they filled up did not fill a bathtub. Yeah, think about that. I know. How many canteens <laughs> yeah. did that take? <laughs> I know. So can we talk about, like, the blood that comes out of the pipes? What what just happened? Like, how does that happen? Awesome, an awesome thing. That's what <laughs> happened. Awesome a thing. great, great... Movie <laughs> moment is what happened. That's the most you need to think about that. That's the extent. That's the extent. It was a good nah, yeah, that's all you need. <coughs> I didn't like it, but that's not surprising. You didn't like when the sink vomited blood everywhere? Not time. really. I was also thinking to myself, like, man, they can never go back. This house is done. All your pipes are ruined. Well, besides that, didn't they, like, light people on fire? I mean, you had the guy melt in the bathtub. Yeah, it's got a smell knock right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you ain't getting that. You ain't getting that sink out. It's dead, dead person mm-hmm. <laughs> in your sink everywhere. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, it was pretty, pretty messed up. <laughs> it was pretty gnarly. I loved it. <laughs> I was just confused. I liked it, but, but I was like, "What is happening?" But to go back to Max, the the head vampire. Like, I like how you think he, you think he's a vampire. You think then you think he's a normal guy. You think they're just hallucin, you know, they're just being suspicious. And until the very, very end of the movie, that you finally find out that. He's the head vampire. And it was all his plan to have the other vampires get the boys because he wanted her to be their mother. So, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's talk about that um, real quick. Uh, let's talk about Diane Weist. Yes. Um, always a great performer. Just absolutely kills the role here. Named Lucy from the book Dracula. Oh. Lucy Western Raw was one of the first people that was killed. Oh, yes. okay. In the movie Abigail, uh, which we just kind of covered, um, yep. one of the main characters. Before this. Oh, marvelous. <laughs> one of the main characters' real name in that movie is Anna Lucia. And it was specifically Anna Lucia to honor Dracula. Aww. There, If you go and go through all the vampire movies ever made, chances are you're going to find more characters named Lucy than not. That's interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. And it's all because of one victim. So that's fun. That's real fun. All right. Learn something new. Yeah, totally. That's what I do. I strive to educate as well as terrify. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I mean, it was an all right plot to that. I mean, his reasoning for why he's trying to get the boys. And I do like how he really doesn't seem to give much of a shit that, is, that the other vampires are killed. He's like, oh, oh, well, you well, killed my sons. That's your fault. <laughs> I'll get new ones. I can fucking make more. Yeah. 
I, I also had a little bit of an issue with the way you turn into a vampire in this fiction. I don't like it. That you just have to drink a drink a bottle of fake wine that's his blood and you're a vampire. <laughs> I don't believe like that. I does this movie break a lot of rules of vampirism? I feel like it's it my wife and I made a few comments like don't you have to invite them in for them to get in there at all? Like how do they yes. get into the house? Can't they I thought nope. vampires can't even go into a house unless they're invited. They can't just blow through the <laughs> blow through the chimney. Max, <laughs> the head vampire, was invited in. Yes, but not to extend to Hollis children too. <laughs> sure. Why sure. not? In okay, this fiction, yes. In other vampirism, like Buffy, for example, no. I like how you say that word. Say it again. No. But <laughs> it, it was... just depends on your fiction. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. It depends on what they're what they want to take from it. I like the idea that they come they can't come into your house unless they're invited, but the idea is that they're always so charming that you just invite them in. Yeah, look at true blood. <laughs> so I mean, then you also have, like, they do some mind control. Or maybe not mind control, but they can... Illusions? Yeah, because he makes them think he's eating the maggots with the rice, and then he makes them think that he's drinking wine when he's drinking blood. Even though I was thinking about that, like, blood has a very distinct smell. Well, okay. First it was the rice as maggots. Then it was the noodles as worms. Oh, yeah. And I, I want to say that I agree. Rice is great. I love rice. A billion Chinese people are not wrong. It's great. Um, <laughs> but start... Flat out tells him, don't drink that. That's blood. And he's like, nah, you're not playing me. He wants to be a cool kid. And the, yeah. cool, fuck her. the cool kid told him to drink what was ever in the bottle. So he did. Yeah, drink this. But the hot girl said don't. Okay, well, clearly he wanted him to be Well, cool I the mean. Hot the yeah. hot girl hanging around with cool boys said don't. So Right. Like, Fair enough. Obviously doing something right. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I was thinking about that because he he takes her for like early on when he has to go on the motorcycle ride, and he sees that it's that she. I mean, I, like the way I would assume, like yeah, it's her boyfriend. Like he's still hitting on her anyway. Like oh hey, come with me. Like yeah, he's brazen. He's brazen for a boy from I mean, Phoenix. Good job, well done. That's what I thought was gonna happen. Yeah, he. I I, 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 yeah, I thought that was a, that was a setup for a murder as well. Totally, and evidently you know it was supposed to be. That's what she was there to do. She was there to lead him to be her first kill, and she could do it. Check it out. But no, David's like, you know what? I like the cut of this guy's jib. He's going to be one of our people. Yeah. It's like, we always use a plus one. There's plenty of bodies to go around here in Santa Clara, especially during the summer. <laughs> so let be that be fine. a lesson to all of our games, my mom fun listeners. If you ever get the urge to steal that partner, do it. You could become a vampire. <laughs> That's it. Immortality is within your grasp. Fair all you got to do is be a little bit of a hoe. And that's fine. <laughs> that I no wouldn't really, shame you. I didn't even think about the fact that she was luring him to be her first victim. Like, I didn't even think yeah. about that. But that makes perfect yeah, she, sense. Well, she said it. I think she says it. She oh, it. yeah. Apparently, someone she, was paying attention. I think it was later, though. She was like, you were supposed to be my first. Yeah. Oh, I mean, she did yeah. fuck him, too, later. So I, I'm assuming it didn't mean the first in that sense. I mean, yeah, it was her first. At least after being a vamp. Well, maybe not. Who knows? It's her first something. Yeah. First kill nah. makes more sense than first fuck. Yeah, but David. That's what my brain went to. David fucks. He's got that energy. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and I guess she was mainly like, because in this fiction, if you drink the blood, then you, you aren't a like full vampire until you make your first kill. I don't know. Laddie looked pretty full vampire to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, Michael does the same thing, too. And you never see him kill anybody. That's yeah. True. They also, these vampires can kind of handle sunlight. They just get really tired. Or maybe because Star and them aren't full vampires yet. Yeah, they're not full vampires. David, who is a full vampire, burst into flames. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah his hand set on fire. Uh, very okay. very neat effect as well. <laughs> I love the single tear. That was an accident. Oh. That was an accident? <laughs> yeah, his contacts were really bothering him. Oh, wow, well, get out of here. left it in. Oh, cool. Interesting. Okay. I like uh, when that stuff happens. Yeah, that's a cool thing. That's great. a cool thought. That's a cool. Yeah, that's neat. Because it fits. I mean, a lot of times, you know, it's just the stuff that you don't plan to have happen in the movie just works, and you just leave it in. I like that a lot. And Indiana Jones did it perfectly too, where he wasn't supposed to shoot the guy. I'm like, ah, it works better. Leave it in. Yep. So happy accidents. No, we love. I love that movie. Perfect movie. So, I will say this time uh, watching it, I was when I finally made the connection that Jamie Gertz is the, the therapist fiance from Twister. Oh, really? Get out of here. Together? Like, that wow. was this past time watching it. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Get out of town. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. So she's been doing stuff quietly in the background. She was good in Twister. I hated her. I love to hate her. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's seen Twister. 
She was great in Twister. It's been a while. Twister's fun. I've seen it once or twice. Have you guys seen Twisters? No. I wanted to in the theater, but now it's not a theater. I'm like, I'll just Wait, that's a movie I've seen in the theater. And I went to see it and it was meh. I'll get around to it. Yeah, that's kind of how I figure. I'm like, ah, at some point. I had no interest, so. But I saw the uh, Twister in the theater like three times. That's how oh. much I was in love with it. <laughs> a lot of people love that movie. It's a really well-known, famous movie now. Great fucking movie. Another thing I want to talk about is with the comic books, like, because the whole thing is that the, the Frog Brothers have, like, vampire comics that they give to the younger brother, and then I guess they're, I'm assuming they're giving to the other people to tell them, hey, there's vampires are real, so we're going to give you comic books. But if you're giving out comic books, then you're upset that they stole your five-cent comic book. But, Why does it keep hey. going lower? It started at a quarter and all ten a nickel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's gonna be penny soon. They're really I mean, crappy comic books. Hey, there are. I, I've got in in the two thousands and the twenty twenties. I have well, uh, probably twenty aughts. I dug through <laughs> bins and I I had some that were twenty five cent books. And this is eighty seven. Yeah. So my I don't know what the price of comic books were at eighty seven, but I can guarantee they were cheaper than four bucks. Get them at the five and ten cent store. <laughs> I mean, that was probably getting close. I mean, the comics were cheap for a long time. Not that cheap, but they were still cheap in the 80s. I mean, actually, if you really want to find out, you could look up. There's some issues on there that are probably from the 80s you could find out. But no, There's some from the 60s as well. Yes, sir. <laughs> Over there. But oh. that's neither here nor there. Okay. <laughs> and now I really was upset with the comic book stuff, as you can tell. I still think his parents are dead, as I said earlier. I'm I mean, the second time I watched and I think it's funny how the first one watched the movie, I didn't even notice they were in the corner. I didn't even notice them either time, except the second time I wasn't super paying attention. So. Me either. I was a little <laughs> bored. But I like the dog to help. Well, the two dogs. You have the the dog that the, that the boys have that gets upset with a vampire, which I, I liked it. And I kept thinking about Twilight, too. <laughs> how werewolves don't like vampires. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, it makes sense. The dog doesn't like because the dog can sense that there's something wrong here. But Max's dog, which is they kind of make the comment about it being a hellhound. You see it like breaking the fence. And to me, I know it's supposed to be a sign that, you know, Joe. never seen that movie. But I know it's supposed to be a sign that he is, you know, the head vampire, too, from the comic book. But it never really gets elaborated on too much, even though there's that there's a small part where Max is outside and a, a, a bat flag flies in front of him or, or falls down next to him when you hear the motorcycles. And I thought, oh, yeah, they're going to kill him. So I found out, yeah, he they're not going to kill him. He's he one of them. Killed them. <laughs> yeah, so a little subtle stuff that kind of lets you know something's not right. That, that diner scene when they try to spill holy water on him and feed him garlic and nothing happens. That's a that's a weird thing. I it, it yeah. was a very, I think it was very effective in ruling him out as the big big bad because it, it, like it did for you, Tiff. It kind of threw me off the scent as well. I was like, oh okay. But then like my that. my logical movie brain's like, well, what's his point then in the movie? Like he's got to have a point. He's been on the screen too much. <laughs> um, I like but it was good. Here. They turn off the lights and then rock. Oh, yep. Yeah, because he has a reflection. But then Michael in the in the mirror doesn't have a reflection. But I guess right. So this movie breaks all the rules of vampirism. I thought, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah. Is it, is it because Michael wasn't a vampire yet? That's why he's partly see through. Like he, they put the hand that's like see through him in the mirror, but he's not. But the idea is that as you become a full vampire, then you be completely no reflection. No, I understand that. Okay. I'm talking about you know how Max, you could see his reflection. And Michael's is half see through. I guess the idea with Max and he's the head vampire, but that doesn't really Maybe make it sense to me. Centuries to learn that shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they did uh, say that because he was invited in, it rendered them powerless. Oh yeah, he does make that comment. Yeah, that's that was that's the movie's excuse for why nothing works on him because he was invited in. He can eat garlic and you can't see through him now. Because he was invited in, he he all their methods are powerless, which is not how this works. No, that was, kind of, that was a mean, bit silly. I'm I mean, okay but, with garlic not working because it to me it's more the sense of it's folklore that garlic would work, so it never actually did. Or I mean, maybe they just thought they were onions. So I do have garlic. to say, I do have to say <laughs> the sight the sight gag of Corey Haim with uh with all of it just just like a necklace of garlic when he goes to stay in his mom's bed because he's nervous and scared <laughs> mom can i stay in your bed tonight okay sure thing of course thank Dan we thank we is just great of course sweetie and then did you have some pizza or something it just smells like garlic and he opens his thing <laughs> he's got these giant i don't know no, what mom. i don't know where he gets his garlic from but right? good lord the I size of that garlic, garlic like that <laughs> Yeah, really. Like that's like industrial strength garlic. That is capital G garlic. I mean, draped around his neck, and he's like, oh, 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 oh. they are <laughs> California. Very funny. Maybe they grow. I don't. Ca- they grow I, California. Look, oh. I don't know. All I know is it was silly and fun, and I enjoyed it. it. 
Uh, also fake. So I, I, I'm assuming. I know I do like the yeah. bathtub where they fill it with the holy water they shouldn't have, and then they put the garlic, and the guy's like, "Garlic oh, doesn't work," and they and they just what push in the holy water. They just push in the bathtub by the dog. I mean, I do like how. I mean, then he makes the huge explosion. I don't like, but I like how the dog just like, oh, "Fuck you," and pushes him in the water. <laughs> that made me happy. Our nice. dog's ears just went back. That's fine. A husky was pretty though. I would love a husky. Yeah. I don't have the energy level for a husky or the room. Yeah, you know what? We made that mistake uh, a couple <laughs> months ago, actually. <laughs> Funny enough, we have a half husky, half something uh, from, from a shelter. Oh. She's, uh, but she definitely has the energy of a husky, and she definitely likes. She also, I think she's half husky, half something, and half goat because she <laughs> eats everything. I'm actually was considering putting like a running a running th- thread on Twitter, like the things my dog has chewed. Like I don't know. A soap dispenser and our remote control and cans of cat food lids and just every everything comes goes into that dog's mouth. It's madness, and uh, she's getting bigger every day. And it's just like, what is happening? She's seven months. She's a puppy. She's a puppy. She's just psychotic. She's just insane. Yeah, I don't want a puppy, puppy. No, she's a puppy, puppy, and she's she, the place we take her for like daycare says. We, they think she's half husky. We know she's half husky because she, her one eye is a husky eye and her other eye is like a regular dog eye. She has two different colored <laughs> eyes. So and her name, Yuna. she's well, I wanted to name her Yuna. I <laughs> wanted to. That was my name for her. But no one agreed. So we settled on Luna instead of Yuna. But I was going to name her Yuna because she had two eyes. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> but that's the perfect name. I like that's a typical husky name. Oh, but, so, but we know she's half husky because she has half a husky head. So... <laughs> You can tell by their heads. Like we have a pit bull black lab mix, and you people, some people can tell it's based some on the head. Can recognize, yeah. Recognize the big head. I'll put a picture here in the slot in the channel for all of us to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> you good dog chewing on a bottle. <laughs> oh. Tina did that for a while. <laughs> I love dogs, but no, this movie made me appreciate the doggy too. I wanted to see more of the hellhound dog, other than him breaking a fence and trying to kill her. Like I wanted more. I did. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty I, cool. I wanted him to turn into a hellhound, actually, but. That wouldn't fit I'm what pretty the movie sure going he for. turned into a hellhound. He almost bit her leg. Yeah, but I want—I mean, I want to see him have like vampire makeup and stuff. Is and... that what, yeah. a, what a hellhound looks like? Is that no. what a hellhound looks like? I don't know. Like? That's what I wanted. I wanted the comic hat in, in the picture that they showed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I just wanted more, but it was cool. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted to comment on this, but the way this movie starts off too is it starts off with a door song. People are strange, and it ends with the same song. When I was a teenager, teenager Mike had had the CD of Doors, the best of Doors, and I remember playing that song for the first time, and I would play that song on loop sometimes. I still like that song. I haven't heard it since I was a teenager, and I'm not a teenager anymore. I'm in my late 30s, and I heard that, and I'm like, ah, people are strange when you're a stranger. No one remembers your name. When you're Soundtrack's a great. Soundtrack's really good. It's a very good soundtrack. Commented oh, on it a couple times. <laughs> I just sent a picture of, of Luna Girl. Oh, she's so cute. But I was surprised they went with People Are Strange instead of Riders on the Storm. But I guess People Are Strange makes more sense for this movie. And the opening, it really works well because it's showing all of the uh, interesting people that live in Santa Carla. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're interesting people. I think we can all agree with that. Yeah. It, it's just this movie has such a contrast of the dread of the vampires and the joyness of being young and being in California in the 80s. I think it works so well together the way it mixes and matches it, and I liked it. I also like that these vampires, I'm assuming they don't turn into bats, I'm assuming they fly, because you do they see do multiple fly. scenes. Now, now, that was my question. Do they turn into bats, or do you think they just have the ability to fly? I, I, was, I thought they'd turn into bats, because, again, I'm thinking, you know, vampire. Well, I mean, or... you see Michael, and he's the flying nun joke reference. Oh, like right, sure. Floating in the... In the, and he holds so they can just the fly. Window. Okay. That's yeah. cool. What was happening there? He was starting to become a vampire, even though. And he was just flying against his own will, or what? I guess, yeah. Because <laughs> he's got the powers. I mean, the part that bothered me with that is when. Because what I think about when you get bit by a vampire, or if you start to turn, that your body has to die. Because, again, I'm thinking of Anne Rice. I'm thinking of I think Twilight's kind of the same way. But in this, he just, he's drinking milk and almost normal. And he's like. <laughs> and he dr- spills the milk, and the mother gets upset because the milk was spilled. <laughs> Well, get a glass or something. I can't stand in movies where people drink milk out of the carton. It is so annoying. That's what I do get all the a time. cup. Me too. Get a. Do you do this, Mike? In your, you just drink milk out of the carton. Yeah. Is this? Are you admitting to? I do. Mike. I do it all the time. So does she, so does my wife. Next, no, Mike. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Mike and Tiff. Mike and Tiff. <laughs> 
There are these things called cups. They, yeah, they, they, I, I, you, I don't. I don't like this. I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> it's it's, it's oh. not not to the point where it's like I don't want to do the show anymore. But it's really one of those like little can, kind of a come to Jesus moment. Like, come on now, guys. We do oh, have we cups. We bought cups from Walmart have that are purple cups with skeleton hands on the side of it. I want to get- Perfect. Yeah. So <laughs> we step have, two is using them. We are using them. She <laughs> buys all the spooky stuff and we keep it all year. That took me a second. <laughs> that was good. So yeah, that's like we have a tree outside our house that she bought some like. It's like a spooky mask for a tree and it has two arms. And we put it on there. We bought the house like four years ago and it's still there and it's never coming off. Nope. It's too hard to get on and off. <laughs> but it's just kind of funny. It's just, it looks like the Mortal Kombat 2 trees for yeah. those that get that reference. <laughs> Monster tree. Uh-huh. I used to dress it up and I don't anymore. Yeah, it just goes all blue away. <laughs> but no. I'll get away. We like spooky stuff. But no, I'm just not going to look at the curtain. I mean, I will. But if I'm going to sit down and watch TV, I'll pour myself a cup. But if I'm just in the in the fridge and I want a little bit of milk, I'm just going to drink out the curtain. Or, in this case, the gallon jug. By the way, when gallon jugs break, it's a huge mess. I know from experience when I worked at Sam's Club. I worked at Sam's Club. We used to, people would drop them, and I'd be like, fuck! And I'd have to go get them out and clean it up. And not say the fuck in front of them. I was like, you didn't do that. Of course I didn't. I did it afterward. Okay. Because you won't go and get the mop in the back. You know? I could see you do I never swore in front of customers. I was a good employee. I only swore when I injured myself. Like, really bad. So... I'm trying to think any any other scenes. That, oh, I was thinking about when Kiefer Sutherland's character is killed. He doesn't burst from the flames like the or not even, like he doesn't explode like the other ones do. Like the yeah. one guy gets the arrow and electrocute blows up. The one guy goes in the tub. Kiefer Sutherland gets impaled by like the horns or bones, and nothing really happens to him. Dies. Yeah, I have well, a, an idea about ooh, that. We'll <laughs> <laughs> I think because he's older than the other ones. Oh, like that. My theory is because he's older, he doesn't explode when he dies. The other ones, you know, did. But I he had to be the one that made them, right? So I'm pretty sure... See, Max exploded too. But I feel like that's a combination of kinetic energy and fire and all sorts of nonsense. <laughs> because, I, I don't know, I think Max was impaled by the actual owner of the house the man of the house. And I think that was maybe held a little more power. I'm just spinning my wheels here, like inventing lore for this movie because it doesn't make sense. You should do that. You're really good at it. I, my whole idea is that, okay, I think we could talk about the ending. Sure. Yeah, please. The actual ending, the last line specifically. So the last line of the movie is grandpa's at the fridge. Drinking a root beer after killing Max. Lucy and Michael and Sam are all okay. And he says the immortal lines. One thing I never could stomach. Oh, wait. What was that? Ah, damn it. I don't remember the exact wording. Shit. That's okay. Give me one minute. One thing about living in Santa Carla, I could never stomach all the damn vampires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and they I just love that. look at him like, Grandpa, you knew? And yeah, then it ends. The movie just ends. That's the end of that. Makes sense that he knew. It's kind of perfect. It's pretty great. Oh, I like. I think it's good. Yeah, it's kind of the best ending. It's great. Yeah, we're done. And I I also want to say too, from a filmmaking perspective, Joel Schumacher directs. I'm not sure who the editor is, but he directs this movie, and this is edited like they have someplace else to be. Like they're (laughs) late for an appointment because this thing is. This is a trim 90 minute movie, almost in a dot. Like it's like a 91 minute movie, which of course fits right into Ken and I's wheelhouse. Love good short movies. I love a tight 90. <laughs> tight 90 is great. This is a tight 90, but almost too tight, especially in the beginning when they're really trying to get through all the exposition and really trying to get to the fun vampire stuff. Some of those cuts in this movie are really like lightning quick and fast. And the second a character is done talking, boom, we're into the next section. It's like they had like they had a date they had to get to, and they were just like late. And they're like, we gotta roll this thing through. Let's just bang this out. So the editing and the pacing of this movie is really almost too quick and tight. That ending is a perfect example of it. It's like, hey, send my catchphrase, boom, and we're out. Bye. <laughs> I said, and I went to my wife. That's it, huh? That's the movie. All right, fantastic, great. I I, I think it's a great thing to end on. The editor is Robert Brown. Robert okay. Brown has done some editing on other horror movies like the Amityville Horror, the original from 1979. I edited Damien the Omen 2. Also a little movie called Police Academy. 
No. You know what I think? I always wonder when it comes to the editing of these things. I just wonder if 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 Mr. Schumacher just didn't give him room to make any better edits. Like as soon as Diane Weist is done saying a line, cut, perfect, let's move on. It's like, let this breathe a bit. Could we? I don't know. But uh, no, I, I, there's, I, I noticed that in the beginning. And as the movie settles in, or maybe I settled in with the movie's rhythm, which is very possible. I, I felt didn't feel it as much. But early on, that first 30 minutes, like, God, the editing in this is just like, it's like, we got to we got to go. We're out of time. We're on a <laughs> clock. Now, I don't know. I think it's this movie. I think the tight 90 was because Joel Schumacher knew who he wanted for his audience. That's probably fair. Sure. Like he wanted the teens, you know, yeah. he wanted to get that that particular audience to come and see this movie. And they didn't have a lot of time. You know, they didn't have a lot of patience for movies. They wanted to go out and do sexy things like drive cars and drink and <laughs> have, you know, sex outside of wedlock. You know what teenagers do. <laughs> so, you know, we may, yeah, it's rated R, but, you know, Isn't teens it? are sexy and they sneak into stuff all the time. <laughs> so, like, and I'm not trying to say Joel Schumacher was a creep. Like, I don't think he was. I think he just remembers what it was like to be a teen. I think he had a great time while he was a teenager. Um, Probably. Now, interestingly enough, uh, Robert Brown would go on to edit another one of Joel Schumacher's movies years later, the movie Flatliners. Oh. Which, fun movie, great movie, starring my cinematic doppelganger, Oliver Platt. (laughs) That movie is not a tight 90. That movie's almost two hours long. So, yeah. Like, this movie was good enough for Joel Schumacher to want to work with him again. Isn't Kiefer Sutherland in that one, too? Or am I- <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, mm. Yeah. That's a good movie. I like that movie. But, like, uh, Joel Schumacher knows what he's doing when he does stuff. And I, I do think that if he was, like, Tommy One Take during this movie, it's because he got exactly what he wanted. Mm. And I can't really think of a lot of directors that have that kind of no i know exactly what i want other people do let people you know play around and breathe and find the role but schumacher's movies have always been you know they're swings yeah i would i would describe <laughs> his movies as like as urgent that's kind of like like the adjective i would use these very urgent movies like we're getting we're getting there we're not we're not yeah. messing about yeah no, Which I think it, it, actors also appreciate too. I know I've, I mean, I've heard actor interviews where they'll say, yeah, you know, this, this director, I think it was, um, Oh, uh, oh, fight club director. Dang it. David Fincher. David Fincher. David Fincher is notorious for making actors do things hundreds of times and actors hate it. Like the opening scene of the social network, whether or not you like that movie or not, the opening scene was evidently done. There was 90 something takes of the opening scene. My and Jesse Eisen. And Jesse Eisenberg is who came from theater is like, what am I doing wrong? And he wasn't getting any direction from Fincher. Okay. And I think Fincher just kept, kept telling him do less. He's like, Go less. which is, which is in an, an acting thing in film. It's in, when you're acting in film, you have to make sure you're moving as little as possible, depending on where the camera is. Cause the camera picks up everything in theater. You have to express, you gotta be big and you have to be very dramatic. So going from theater to film is a different acting technique. It's very hard to kind of make that change. So, but Jesse Eisenberg kept they kept telling him just do less, do less. So I think he'd much rather Joel Schumacher just getting it done. <laughs> Let's bang this out. <laughs> we got a bar to go to after this. Let's move. I think this movie works that it's shorter, just that it's an hour and a half oh, yeah. and not two, two and a half hours. No, like, this does not need, need more. To be, this does not need to be a, a two and a half hour period drama. No, this is no, this no. is perfectly fine as is. Just a fun romp. I mean, and it's a classic horror movie that. You know, one of the ones that I felt just needed to be on the show. Actually, this this was planned back when I first started writing up Spooktober. This is one of the things, Tiffany, you said you wanted to be on here. Mm-hmm. And I remember that you guys had talked about liking Joe Schumacher when we did the Batman movie. So that's kind of how this all came to be. Mm-hmm. You didn't do it for me. You didn't I did it for me. you. No, you did. I did it for all of you. <laughs> if he would have done it for us, he would have done 8mm. <laughs> I forgot that's a Schumacher movie, yeah. too. Ooh, boy. Ah, <laughs> we're going to do that, aren't we? I hope so. We should, but it's it's a toughie. It is a toughie. It's not one that I like to subject that. myself. No, you gotta be in the right headspace for that. You gotta really just be prepared. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it was on that dark, depressing poll that you had us do. Yep, the no happy endings poll. It didn't win. <laughs> womp womp. Voices was good though. Yeah, voices was good. I said I picked good things. Stop <laughs> yeah, being so do. surprised. I'm not surprised anymore. That's why I'm actually willing <laughs> to go see the black phone. 
in theaters because you said it, and you also said it wasn't that scary. So you heard him. You heard it. You heard it. Now I'm going hot. <laughs> you want to? Have you seen last Black Phone? I have not seen Black Phone. No. I think you would dig the Black Phone. I think you would really like it too. Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, yeah. I, oh, that I, one, yeah. I really but, think you would dig it. When I was watching, I was like, "Ooh, this is a Bill and Ken movie." <laughs> oh my god! I just had a great idea. What? I'll talk about it later. It's okay. not a okay. show idea. But oh man. Okay. Right. Anyway, I think I've said everything I needed to say about this. Same. Okay. Let's go to Shelf Stacker Box then. And Tiffany, why don't you go first? <laughs> I would say Shelf. I really enjoy this movie. I didn't remember a whole lot. I remembered apparently enough. You did. <laughs> but I would say Shelf. Okay. And Bill. I am going to put this on the stack. I, I enjoyed my time with it. I liked it as it went on. I think there's a lot of charm and charisma. We didn't even get into. Uh, the other Corey's gruff action hero voice uh, oh, no, the whole time, which was, which was so fun and good. I really enjoyed him, him and his buddy pretending to be the uh, to be tough guys and succeeding at being tough guys towards the end. I yeah, this was fun. I enjoyed it as as it went on. I settled into the movie's rhythms and really ended up enjoying it. So uh, but but not to the point where I think this was this is like an all time banger for me. So this is an easy uh, stack for me. OK. I'll go next. This is a stack for me, too. I enjoyed it, but yeah, it just it was fine. I'm glad I saw it. I'm glad I finally got to see this movie and I saw the correct movie this time. So the correct <laughs> yeah, because I thought I saw the opening of this years ago and realized, nope, you never did, Mike. Now I want to see the second one. I didn't realize it was me. It came out like, over 20, 20 years, years later. later. I'm not. That's a little too long to try to go back to the well. So, so it was a sequel, though? It wasn't like a remake or a reboot? Ken? No, it's a direct sequel. Oh, so was the third one. I didn't even know there was a third one until the DVD showed up with it on it. <laughs> so watch him, Ken. I'm gonna put this on the shelf. It was it was a pretty important part of my childhood. I'll be completely honest with you. I throw it on the shelf just for the soundtrack alone because you got two songs from In Excess and Jimmy Barnes on there. Jimmy Barnes, you probably know mostly as the Screaming Cowboy meme. That was around for a while. Okay. But Lou Graham from Foreigner has a song on here. Oh. Uh, we didn't even talk about uh, Gerald McMahon, who did the theme song, Cry Little Sister, mm. which has been covered many times recently, even, by uh, Marilyn Manson, which, nah, <laughs> whatever. But more importantly, it was covered by churches, and it was really good. Ooh, I got to check that out. That actually sounds really good. Uh, the Echo and the Bunnyman version of People Are Strange that ends the film. Great. Love Echo and the Bunnyman. Like this. This was a soundtrack for Ken. <laughs> and I was very pleased with it. And I Tim like Capello's it. power anthem. I still believe I still play that song. I, was I love that song. Happy to hear a Doors song. That's all. <laughs> I liked Doors a lot when I was a, when I was a teenager because it, it fit me. I was an emo teenager. An so. emo or an evil? Emo. Oh, okay. I wasn't evil. No. I, I didn't kill help. anybody. You don't have to kill people to be evil. It helps. <laughs> to go along with the evilness. No. And if it's the theme of the movie, we're not mm, okay. I didn't kill you any animals. Just push people down the stairs. That's fine. Great. Right. <laughs> Torture people. Cut off their limbs. No. Wow, this got dark. It did really fast. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be trying to say I was an emo because I listened to a bunch of <laughs> sad... Like, it was, well, I mean, I don't know if emo is considered doors, but I, I, I was at sad teenager that met his first girlfriend by showing her magic cards nice. i did actually all that happened oh, very very quick aside i was at a <laughs> uh, I, I was at a child's birthday party a uh, couple last weekend and one of the guests was wearing an echo and the bunny men shirt i was oh, like dope. you sir are you sir are dope but that was my exact <laughs> feeling i don't know a ton of their music but i what i've heard i really like and i was like you sir are cool <laughs> you are officially a cool person that's awesome <laughs> love that yeah all right, I don't think I have anything else to say, so let's go to plugs. And Ken! Uh, you can find my film writings on kennisanity.wordpress.com. My movie podcast, which is absolutely not called my movie podcast, is <laughs> looming ever closer. And I will be making a an announcement on a November episode uh, with the title. And should have some episodes following shortly thereafter. Very excited for that. Good, I'm, I'm awesome, happy man. for you. Hey, man. It's so good. And Bill. Uh, I st I still do a show called The Gamer Looks at 40. It's just keep on keeping on. If you've never heard of this podcast before, then you're probably new to the show. So welcome to both. 
So if you enjoy retro video games, then uh, that's the show for you. I talk to people about their histories with games and the stories behind our fandoms. And uh, it's a good time indeed. By the time this airs, I'm sure I'll still be in Final Fantasy World. And, this airs um, later this month. You will be. I will be in Final Fantasy VII World. Exactly. So we'll be talking about Final Fantasy VII. You ain't so getting you, out of Final Fantasy until some point in 2025. No, there's no chance. There's Once Final Fantasy VII is done, it's a pretty much a downhill from there until it hit X. X will have a few episodes. And then from there, it'll be a tight month and a half and we're, we're done ski. We well, got um, 11, 12, 13, 13, 2. No one like, cares about those. No, it, 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 no one, <laughs> well, they're not really. No one has like strong, heartfelt recollections about Final Fantasy 13. I highly doubt someone's like, Nate. oh, man. Nate. I remember when Lightning first came onto the scene. It's just I, no one does. It's, it's, it's at that point, the retro part of it is kind of. We're just kind of now doing the history part of it. But Final Fantasy VII, oh boy, oh boy, people like that game a lot. Yes, they do. Final Fantasy VIII, people don't like that game a lot. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I do. <laughs> You're probably one of the few, though. Yeah, you are one of you, Mike, you are one of the few. <laughs> you, are, you are one of the few, sir. Oh, I know that. that. That's no surprise there when it comes to Final Fantasy VIII. I, I know the fandom for it, so. I'm not surprised. It's you. The fandom is you. Well, I met a few people. I did not have to There, there, there are a few who, who, who have who have already shared their 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 a few hesitant praises. <laughs> a lot of people saying it stinks and they don't know why it exists, and that'll make for an interesting episode. <laughs> All right. And if you enjoyed this episode, there's over 650 other episodes of this podcast. You can find everything we do on Podbean. We do movies, comics, TV shows, games, all sorts of content. So definitely go check out our giant catalog. If you want to support the show, we do a Patreon for a little dog. You vote in our Patreon poll. We have one to two polls every month. So definitely go support the show. And we have a Discord. Join our Discord. That's how you can be on the show, chat with us, suggest things for the show that will someday happen. So definitely go do all that. And while you're talking my awesome intro and outro, courtesy of Helena at Hell Has Fury. Follow her on TikTok and Instagram. See, you will see a link to her link tree in the show notes. Definitely go check her out. And please follow us on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, TikTok for all videos, YouTube audio only, and rate and reviews wherever you get your podcast. I think that's everything I need to say, so we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. So long. <laughs>